Hello and welcome to a new video about electrochromatics or electrohydraulics, does not really matter. What we have said last time. Last time we said, okay, we want to have the working part and the power part and so on. We want to have it in hydraulic or pneumatic in fluid technique because obviously there are a lot of advantages. However, the control part shall be in electrical or electronic way, yeah, or maybe even a PLC, simply because, you know, there are also a lot of benefits. It's easier to maintain, it does not need too much space, it, does, it, it is uh, easier to develop, yeah, to, to commission, and, and yeah, it's simply, it's not that costly. It's easier, okay, to do it with electric. So we have this approach, yeah, so that we have a power part, in this case I draw the hydraulic power part, but could also be a pneumatic, then the letters here are a little bit different. Yeah. So in this case I have chosen a double acting cylinder, and we do have here a corresponding valve, for two-way valve in this case. Okay. So what do we need? Yeah, so what, what do we need? The control system needs to have interfaces, all right? Control system needs to have interfaces. Uh, on one hand, we need to read in here some limit switches. Yeah? Those limit switches, if the cylinder rod is inside or outside, this BG1 and this BG2, or however this is then called, yeah? this needs to be read in by the control system. All right? So we need there some some sort of switches, whatever. We could use, for instance, something like this, yeah, roller, roller lever switch somewhere here. Yeah. This is a miniature one, there are also big ones. Or maybe we can even use something like this. This is a proximity switch, a rather big one. They are also smaller in size, they come in different sizes. Uh, and if something is getting close to this proximity switch, is getting approximately in close to this proximity switch. It doesn't need to touch. It must not even touch, yeah, because then maybe it's broken. Uh, then something inside there will switch, and we will also recognize this with this cable, so that we can then mount here something, or even inside the cylinder that we detect the the absence or the presence of the of the piston itself, huh? then we also know where it is. If we know where the piston is, then we know where the rod is, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so this is one direction, so we can read it in, and the other direction would be that the control system may control this valve. Yeah? And we already said there are possibilities of controlling valves with such coils. Okay. So these are then controlled by the control system. This is an electrical signal and the valve is electrically switched. Uh, how is this working? Well, with the help of magnetic forces. All right. How is this working? We are using so-called coils. What is a coil? Well, we know here I have a, a copper wire, uh, a copper wire, and we know if we send current through this copper wire, we will receive a magnetic field. Current is producing a magnetic field, yeah? and this magnetic field is going around this wire. Yeah? So if the current is running in this direction, it's like a right hand screw going in this direction around. Okay, and if I now make a uh, bow, something like this. Huh? And we think about how the magnetic magnetic field is turning out. So in the, if the wire that the current is going in this direction now, huh? so in, in this from, starting from here, going there, huh? then at this part of the wire, the magnetic field is going out here and going in here. Yeah? And in this part, yeah, then right-hand screw is going out here and going also in here. So in here, 
I have the magnetic field of this current and of the same current returning, but I have doubled the magnetic field just by this band. Yeah? So I could do it further. Yeah? I will make a second band now. So here we have now two so-called windings. And if we go again with the current, yeah, then here inside this hole, yeah, all the current, because it's running in circles, will produce a magnetic field which is going in this direction. Yeah. Inside there, all the currents, all the windings, each winding will produce an additional magnetic field inside this hole. And the more windings I do, uh, the more windings I do here with my with my copper wire, uh, the more intense the magnetic field inside will get. All right. It's easy to get off. It's not that easy anymore to get off. So now we have quite a lot of of windings already. Yeah? And well, the magnetic field inside there is comparable strong. Okay? So what we can do actually there is we can produce an electromagnet. Whenever there is current, there will be an electric field and magnetic field inside. And whenever there is no current, there will be no magnetic field inside. Yeah? So we can select if we turn on or off a magnet. Yeah? And this we can use to move something. Yeah? This, is a, this is a coil. Yeah? And if we do it with a, a thinner wire yeah? and do a lot of more windings, it will look like that bug. Uh -huh. This is exactly the same, but with thinner wire uh, and a lot of more windings. Uh. And what I have actually is here a piece of uh, iron, simply. Uh. So it's ferromagnetic material, a material which will stick to this is a magnet. Here we see this sticks. Yeah? So this is a ferromagnetic material. Itself, it's not a magnet. And I will put it in there. Yeah? Here, this exactly fits through. Yeah? Now, I can move it freely here. Yeah? And now, if I turn on, if I turn on, uh, voltage. Uh, if I apply now here voltage, so the current is running, what will happen? Let's see, now we have 1 volts, 2 volts. Uh, now there is an elect a magnetic field produced inside this, yeah, and it will suck in this piece of iron. Uh. A little bit more power. Come on. <laughs> okay. This is how these things are working. Yeah? If we manage to design these coils here in a pretty nice manner, yeah, so that we can, for instance, I will mount it like I will mount it like this, yeah? Yeah? mount it like this, On, oh. let's make it this way. Yeah? I mount it like this here on this side of, of the valve, yeah? and if I'm now turning on the current here, book, the valve will be shifted. Yeah? And I do the same on the other side, because on the other side, then, because the valve was shifted, this part is going out. Yeah. This part, because this, this magnet was shifted the valve outside, yeah. this part was going out, and if I turn on the other spool then, or the other coil, book, it will shift back the valve. 
and this one will also be pushed back. Okay, so this is how this might be working. All right. So we do have this is a nice color for a copper wire. We do have a coil. It consists of several windings. Okay, and inside this coil we will feed in some sort of iron part. Okay, this will be stuck inside, inside. Okay, and if there is then current passing through this coil, yeah, there will be a magnetic field inside this coil, yeah, and it will suck in fuk, this iron part. Yeah? So this is some ferromagnetic. And this here is a, a coil. And how much voltage do I need? We have seen at this coil we needed around uh, 5 volts, something like this, to make a magnetic field strong enough to pull this in. Yeah. It depends on the size of the of the, the wire which is used. If we are using a thick wire, we can use a very high current. Yeah. If you're using a thin wire, we can only use small currents. However, then it's higher resistance and then we can use uh, higher voltages. So the design, the electrical design of this spool, of this coil, is determining how much voltage we need. Yeah? I mean, the goal is clear. We need a certain amount of magnetic field. If we want, if we want, uh, so there in there, there's a magnetic field. And if we want to have it big, bigger, we have to use more windings or more current. Okay, and we want to have it smaller, less windings or less current. I hope this is clear, eh? because the current actually is producing the magnetic field. If I want to have more magnetic field and I have the same current, I simply make a few windings more eh? and then the same current will produce a bigger magnetic field, because we have seen the more windings we have, the more magnetic field we receive. All right. So, how does this how does this really look like? Uh, let's see if I can I can draw it. Yeah. We have here somewhere a coil. with a lot of windings. Okay, I cut this open. So here we have the, the spool actually where the coil is wider where the, where the windings are on. Yeah, this is isolated material here. Yeah. And up here we have our copper windings here. A lot of copper windings passing through. Yeah. So they are winded around this. Yeah? And in here I have somewhere some sort of magnetic material. Yeah? Maybe even in a 
casing. Yeah? So that is, act is actually closed here. Yeah? And this is, for instance, here with a rod. Yeah? And it will push down here the valve, yeah? the coil or the, 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 the pistons of the valve. Yeah? So if we turn on current, yeah, this part wants to go in the middle. Okay, so this part wants to be in the middle. Yeah. If we turn on the current, and then we have a force pushing down here and maybe opening here the valve. Okay. So, and sometimes we even have here closed, yeah. something like this, and there might be a spring inside, and if we turn off, if we turn off the current and the spring is pushing this back and the valve will be closed. This might be a valve which is spring returned. Okay. So this might be, for instance, if below here we have a 3 2 way valve, then it might look like this. On one hand there's a spring, on the other hand there is this coil, yeah? and it might be like this. Yeah? Now I make it one, two, three. Now it's a pneumatic valve. Yeah? I said it doesn't really matter if it's pneumatic or hydraulic. The principle is the same. All right. Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's it. And so actually what we need is down here a valve, pneumatic or hydraulic valve, and a coil which is which is switching this valve. Okay. This is this direction. Okay. So we're simply using simply magnetic magnetic power to shift something, to, to move something inside the valve. We have talked about valve designs, yeah, and we said, okay, there are maybe, we talked about uh, valve which are operated by pressure. Yeah? If we substitute this pressure by this rod, yeah? we're not using a piston with uh, pressure to apply, we are using some simply this rod, yeah, and we apply the shifting force by the spool, by the coil, we are there. So the valve itself look pretty much the same. The only parts which are changing are the outer parts where they operate. And that's it. This is how we transfer electrical signal to hydraulic signals. This is how they can be combined. You see, it's not that difficult. Sometimes, however, we want to measure if there is pressure or not. Yeah. Next time we are going to talk about how we get signals from the pneumatic part, yeah, where things are not moving, where pressure signals, yeah, to our control system, how this might work. Yeah. Pressure switches. This are the the this is the topic of our next video. No, the, these are the topic. Ay, ay, ay. This is the topic of our next video, okay? Pressure switches. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye. Let's see what is happening if I'm using instead of this iron bar here the magnet. Let's see, nothing. Ah, I have to plug in. Shoot it! Magnetic gun. <laughs>